Hello everyone and welcome to the Pen Prescription. I'm Dr. Chris. I'm a double board certified physician, a mom, and a fountain pen enthusiast. Today I'm going to be discussing the Retro 51 Tornado fountain pen and we'll do an ink spotlight on Noodler's Southwest Sunset. All the materials seen in this video were purchased with my own private funds and all opinions expressed are my own. As a disclaimer, this channel is not intended for medical advice. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the pen. So here we have a Retro 51 Tornado fountain pen. This is the Autumn Leaves edition from Gold Spot, a collaboration with artist Tracy Marcioli. Retro 51 is well known for producing many different editions of this fountain pen, and even more so its sister, the Tornado Retractable Rollerball. Each edition is themed and decked out in artwork, which is typically really beautiful, really fun, and really perfectly expresses the theme. If you keep an eye on Retro 51, it's a good bet that they'll have one come along that speaks to you, because they cover a breadth of topics and themes. I love autumn, and purple is my color, so I couldn't resist this one. It was $99 from Goldspot, and this is a numbered edition out of 300 pens made. You can see here on the cap, uh, it's engraved. I have number 166 out of 300, so you can see that there, 166 out of 300 engraved on the cap along with Tornado and Retro 51, and there's a knurled uh, pattern above that adjacent to the finial. Um, it's what I would say is an average size pen, 137 millimeters long capped and pretty average girth at 11.8 millimeters diameter of the body. It has a decent heft, but it's not heavy at 34 grams and that weight does include the cap. It's a copper plated barrel with matte purple finish. There is a tapered body with the flat ends, as you see here, so plain copper on that side, and then on this side is uh, an autumn leaf. It has a screw cap, and the cap has a somewhat stiff clip, but it's functional. Um, I probably wouldn't try to put this on anything thicker than a shirt pocket, though. Uh, these pens uh, do post. Um, it's push to post. Um, as I said, I don't, I've, well, I've said it in other videos, but I don't usually post my pens. Um, but when I posted this one and tried writing with it, I did find that it is uh, too heavily back weighted. So I do think that uh, the cap is fairly hefty. And I think if you posted this, you would find it too back weighted to be comfortable. Um, the nib is a Yovo number no. six stainless steel. Uh, you can see the Retro 51. Uh, logo, just a 51 in a circle etched on there. Um, the section is smooth and tapered with a small flare at the end. The threads here are not sharp. They did not bother me at all. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. So the cartridge converter was included with the pen, and I don't know if you can see it in the ink there, but there's a small little agitator bead inside this particular converter that they send you. Um, they also included two standard international short ink cartridges to get you started if you prefer. Um, and that's pretty much my overview of the pen. Uh, let's take a look at some size comparisons. So here's our Retro 51 Tornado fountain pen. Here it is next to a Parker 51 and a Pilot Metropolitan. And here is a Lamy Safari, so some common fountain pens here for you to see. Uh, fairly similar size in terms of both length and girth uh, between the Tornado and the Metropolitan and the Tornado and the Parker 51. Um, so we'll just do a little uncapped comparison here as well, briefly. So you can see uh, fairly similar to the Metropolitan here in terms of uncapped length. All right. All right, so here we have a writing sample with the Retro 51 Tornado fountain pen with a fine nib. Um, again, this pen has a number six Yo Yovo stainless steel nib. Uh, which I found to be a fairly reliable writer. I don't really have any complaints about it. It felt nice and sturdy. I uh, didn't have any issues with skipping or hard starts or anything like that. Um, 
I will say I did write with this pen every day that I had it inked, um, and it is inked with Noodler's Southwest Sunset, as you see here in the writing sample. So I didn't really give this pen an opportunity to go for a prolonged period without being used, but um, I used it, you know, once a day at least, and uh, I never had an issue with hard starts, at least with that frequent of use. So. Um, I would say this nib is average. I didn't find it to be super smooth. I didn't find it to be scratchy. I didn't find it to have, you know, uh, unusual amount of feedback or anything like that. Um, just a fairly average writer. So, you know, for the price of $99, I think you're basically getting a really nice artistic pen. Um, if you're here for the artistry of the pen, for the design of the pen, then uh, this is gonna be a good deal for you. Uh, I think it's a reliable writer, and like I said, for the price point, really what you're paying for is the beauty of the pen, the appearance, and the artwork. All right, so having completed the writing sample, let's go ahead and just do our ink spotlight. So as I said earlier, this uh, pen was inked all week with Noodler's Southwest Sunset. Um, this ink was previously known as Apache Sunset, and uh, this is my bottle of it here. I have the old label that still says Apache Sunset on it, but the new bottles say Southwest Sunset. It was renamed uh, in the summer of 2022. Um, so this is a gorgeous ink. It's very uh, highly regarded among people who are into artistic inks. It's a yellowy orange with some really fantastic shading going on. Um, this is, and I did some ink splatters here, we'll get to those in a minute, but you can see some, just some really awesome shading going on with, uh, you know, in the orange and yellow range. Um, and this um, ink doesn't have any shimmer, it's not waterproof or anything like that. Um, but it is uh, really a gorgeous ink in a color range that is a little bit hard to nail. So um, I did my usual ink splatters on here. You can see there's some drops here and some splatters here, and I really thought that would bring out some cool properties of the ink, but one thing you'll see is that these ink splatters are still wet. I will tell you that I did these ink splatters uh, over 48 hours ago, um, and this is still not dry. So is this a rapidly drying ink? Absolutely not. Um, I will say this is Tomoe River paper, so it is a uh, you know low absorption, high ink resistance type of paper, which is great for showing off the shading properties, but not so good for slowly drying inks uh, like this one. Apparently, I really thought two days would be enough time for this to dry, but I was wrong. Um, but anyway, it's a beautiful ink. Uh, I don't find it to be finicky or difficult to work with. I know a lot of people um, feel like noodlers are risky or difficult to work with or something, but I don't find that to be the case at all in this case. Um, and so, yeah, it's a really beautiful ink, and I'm happy to spotlight it today, uh, wet ink splatters aside. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so without further ado, we will go ahead and write you a prescription for the Retro 51 Tornado Fountain Pen. Uh, I think if what ails you requires an excellent uh, artistry fountain pen with good theming and a beautiful finish, then these are going to be the right pens for you. Uh, obviously, you know, wait for a theme that really speaks to you and then pounce on it. You know, the writing experience is good and nice, reliable writer, average weight, stainless steel nib for a decent price. Uh, you really can't beat the theming on these pens. So we'll go ahead and approve this for use.
All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this edition of the pen prescription where we reviewed the Retro 51 Tornado Fountain Pen. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, leave comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback and hope to see you next time. Thank you.